it, it just ain't there at all. Wow. Uh, whether or not uh, there is a, a concerted effort to dramatically change the lay of the land in the Middle East, for example, by uh, arming uh, terrorist groups in Syria that we know apparently know nothing about, having them transfer and become active with the ISIS group in, in Iraq and start taking over territory that we uh, uh, spent a great deal of, uh, of, of human and fiscal resources uh, bringing some stability to over the last decade. Whatever it is, this administration is causing deep and if we're not careful, permanent damage to America's ability to influence events in the world because the image we are presenting, whether it's part of a concerted plan by Obama, the ideologue, or part of, a, of an unfortunate uh, administration that we have that just has no earthly idea what it's doing, that is an incompetent administration, the message being sent to our adversaries and our allies is we do not know what we're doing, we can't be trusted, and therefore people are going to throw in with other groups, other countries, other leaders, not the United States. I, I had heard this when he was first running, and, and I didn't really believe it from a lot of really smart people, but they said, no, Obama does really hate America. The people he represents hate America, kind of like Dinesh D'Souza's 2016, and, and they want a new New World Order. They want to realign the world uh, with really anti-capitalist bent, and that they just can't help it. They want to wreck this country. It's a famous statement when Bill Clinton was being inaugurated. Uh, that night, uh, they, they had a bunch of F-16s fly over, and Ron Silver, this was documented in the news at the time, I'm sure you remember it, said, how dare them fly jets over us to threaten us to show the weird disconnect. I mean, the, the, somebody who knew nothing about the military, and they said, no, no, Ron. Hillary bumped him and said, those are our jets now. And, and I just, I, it's one thing to be radicals in college and all this stuff, but they're in control of the country, and I just think they can't help wrecking it out of almost a subconscious hatred of it. I, I think that best describes it, Congressman. Well, uh, Obama is clearly an ideologue, which makes him very different and much more dangerous than Bill Clinton uh, was uh, back uh, then. And, of course, we, we impeached Bill Clinton, as you certainly uh, recall. We were very active in that. Uh, and uh, he became only the, the very first elected president ever impeached. Andrew Johnson was the first, but he was an elected president. And as you and I talked uh, a few months ago, I guess the last time I had the honor of being on your show, we talked a little bit about you know, uh, impeachment, and I indicated that I uh, thought it was appropriate to begin an inquiry of impeachment, not articles of impeachment, but an inquiry. And since then, uh, I've seen uh, two very credible books uh, come out on impeach, uh, impeachment of, uh, of Obama, many, many articles. Uh, so clearly there, there is a, an awakening out there among a lot of Americans that these problems go beyond simple incompetence. When you have a president that deliberately almost proudly, Alex, violates the law, thumbs his nose, uh, figuratively speaking, at the Congress uh, when he not only fails to protect our borders uh, in, uh, in Texas, uh, for example, not only fails to follow the law uh, with regard to uh, apprehending those uh, and uh, deporting those who enter and remain in this country unlawfully, but encourages, encourages uh, illegals to enter this country uh, and uses our precious military resources, which are stretched so thin already, to simply, as Sheriff Joe Arpaio, my good friend out in Arizona, said, change diapers uh, rather than protect our nation, we've gone beyond simply, well, you know, these problems will, uh, will resolve themselves. They won't. The American people and our representatives in the Congress, in the House, have to begin the process of rectifying this. Well, I agree, and, and, and so a lot of bad things are happening, but I want people to know the positive news. I have never seen the emergency sirens going off like they are in the public's mind right now across the board. And the fact that you notice he's not doing this total open deal in California that destabilizes the state they control. They're doing it in Texas as part of this battleground Texas plan that Project Veritas and James O'Keefe got on video six months ago where they said, we're going to flood things with illegals, give them IDs, let them vote. And, and, and turn Texas blue, and, you know, don't worry, we're going to get the guns. There really is a, 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 a criminal energy now 
to the Democrats, I mean, the Democrats of the, say, the 70s would be like the Republicans, uh, you, you know, of, 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 of a decade ago. I mean, they're so radical now and so out of control. And, and we broke this three days ago. DrudgeReport.com put it out. And the media checked it and confirmed it. We talked to emergency managers. We got video. The Border Patrol's quitting in mass. They blew the whistle and told us where to come. An ICE agent did. Uh, in McAllen and, and Brownsville, the buses drive over. The Border Patrol's ordered to stand down. They load on white vans and are taken to Catholic and Protestant and, and evangelical churches. And the Border Patrol gives them vouchers for the Greyhound tickets children and adults to drive quote into their families that are illegals as well so we have the video and people for two days couldn't believe it and now it's been confirmed we have the video sir uh, of the border patrol in texas if this isn't impeachable i know you filed the stuff first on clinton so so you take action i mean this as you said makes bill clinton look like a choir boy uh that that it's going on and then to honor the dream act kids that are illegal while talking out of the other side of his mouth saying, oh no, if you come here, we'll deport you when they've suspended most deportations, including of aggravated felons. You're a former federal prosecutor. I mean, what do you call this? I, I, I mean, this is, what do you think they're going to get out of this? Well, what uh, two questions there. One, uh, it, is, uh, it is in a sense a very clear example of obstruction of justice, uh, the failure to execute the law and to deliberately stand in the way and take steps uh, so that the law uh, is not or cannot be carried out. Uh, it also is uh, clearly dereliction of duty, failure to, uh, failure to honor his oath of office. Uh, and these all are those sorts of things that Alexander Hamilton, one of the authors uh, of the Federalist Papers, described as uh, high crimes and misdemeanors. Uh, not only direct criminal actions such as obstruction of justice and perjury as committed by Bill Clinton, uh, not only are those sort of actions uh, clearly uh, impeachable and the sort of actions by a president that, uh, that our founders uh, envisioned as providing grounds for impeachment, but even if it is not a president deliberately and explicitly violating a law, but simply engaging in policies that subvert uh, the rule of law, uh, instituting policies that do so, then those also, even though they may not be legally criminal acts, they are the sorts of public acts that a president uh, carries out that were envisioned and clearly and explicitly in some of the Federalist Papers sure. writings by Hamilton, the sort that should give rise to uh, to impeachment. Wow, strong words, but uh, we have strong actions from Obama and the Democrats, so that's what we have to respond with. How do you, how do you with your inside knowledge of how these guys work, uh, Congressman Bob Barr joining us, if you just tuned in, how do you think they think they're getting away with this? Because... They seem to be just desperately trying to sink the ship as fast as they can. Is it Cloward and Piven just a plan to bring in so many people that are destitute that it overwhelms the system and we collapse into pure socialism? Well, it, it, it's, it's an effort with, with regard uh, to this you know, specific crisis that they are creating and fostering uh, and flaming uh, with uh, all of these uh, uh, children. Uh, and these aren't just uh, just you know, toddlers in diapers. Oh, they're uh, MS-13, you uh, name it. Yep. They are uh, uh, teenagers, sometimes uh, preteens, uh, who are very clearly uh, part of violent gangs. Uh, in some instances, I wouldn't be surprised if they have a had actually engaged in murder. We have uh, very clear evidence that these gangs do enlist uh, children, uh, sometimes under uh, even preteens, uh, to go out and commit murders because they are less suspect if you see them. Uh, so what, what we're witnessing here is an effort to bring in uh, a lot of these uh, illegals, disperse them around the country uh, so that uh, they, it then becomes much, much harder to find them, to identify them, uh, to make them uh, appear in court. None of these people virtually are going to appear in, in court once they've been released and disseminated. They say on video, sir, the they say on video that they just send them wherever they want to be sent to, quote, families and drop them off at bus stations paid for by taxpayers. Yeah, 
And uh, in the meantime, uh, we're using uh, our military bases, uh, which which ought to be uh, engaging in exercises to protect our nation and so forth. Uh, they're having to babysit uh, with uh, and use uh, our taxpayer resources that should be going to military pay, maintaining military bases, buying equipment and so forth. It's being used to babysit uh, these people. Why don't we, for example, put them on planes or buses and send them back to Mexico? That would be 50 uh, times even, cheaper. Uh, yeah, even even though uh, these are not all Mexican nationals, uh, they you know some of them, many of them, apparently are coming in from other countries in Central America. They are coming from Mexico. Obviously, Mexico is a big part of the problem. They are doing nothing to stem this tide. They are they are encouraging it. We have or should have a great deal of influence that we can bring to bear with regard to Mexico because of the trade and other relations that we have with Mexico. What are we doing? Uh, apparently nothing to force Mexico to address this problem. We ought to be sending them back across the border by the busload as soon as uh, they cross over and we can uh, apprehend them instead of taking care of them here. It's Mexico's problem. Let Mexico deal with it. BarCongress.com, BarCongress.com or BobBar.org uh, redirects there. Only got about five minutes or four minutes left with you. I want to move quick now. Speaking uh, of uh, military pay, the death list, just like the death panels, every military person I talk to, even Democrats, say in the last six years the VA has gone from bad to nightmarish hell. And so we're going to house illegal alien kids, and they complain the food isn't good enough. It's a lot better than Michelle Obama public school food. And then, the, and then literally the VA isn't taking care of the troops. Uh, speak to the VA a little more on Iraq and any other points, uh, Congressman Bob Barr. With regard to the VA, this is uh, – this, this you know, some people say I don't have a heart, but if I did have a heart, this would bring it to tears. What our Veterans Administration, the Department of Veterans, the Department of Veterans Affairs is doing to our veterans, it is killing them through their inaction, their cowardice to own up to the the sorry record that many of these hospitals have, and engaging in what Alex, I have to tell you, appears to me to be a possible racketeering enterprise, a RICO. Uh, when you look at the 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 fraud that has been going on. Uh, and the very possible destruction of records, alteration of official documents in order to make themselves not look so bad as they really are at some of these hospitals. I think uh, a good prosecutor uh, at the national level uh, should be looking at putting together a RICO case, a racketeering enterprise case against uh, these individuals and some of the uh, uh, VA institutions at which they've been doing this. Uh, it has risen beyond simply a bureaucratic problem. I think we have a criminal problem uh, with uh, the Veterans Administration. Absolutely. Putting people on. on secret illegal death list and basically let them die. That's aiding and abetting and murder. And, and then that dovetails with the missing emails from all these different officials uh, with the IRS. I mean, this is incredible. It is. Uh, uh, we, we saw this to a, to a smaller extent, Alex. You may remember with some of the uh, White House uh, travel documents and some of the Whitewater documents where they uh, they tried to claim that uh, the emails were missing. Oh, gee, they had uh, you know, just uh, dissipated into the ether. Uh, that doesn't happen. Uh, I think that uh, given the lethargy at our Department of Justice where we have an attorney general who not only uh, force, tries to force the administration to abide by the law but enables it and encourages the administra this administration to violate the law, giving them legal cover, uh, you know, we ought to uh, demand uh, that uh, a special prosecutor be appointed. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we don't have any longer uh, the independent counsel statute, but uh, in the absence of that, uh, what we ought to uh, see is a, uh, a select committee on this, this Veterans Administration scandal, uh, which uh, to me is every bit, if not more important than the uh, very yes. important work of the Benghazi Select Committee. Well, folks, you need to get behind your campaign uh, in closing. I'm no former federal prosecutor or constitutional lawyer like you, but th this whole administration operates like an organized crime syndicate, like you said, racketeering. I, I mean, bottom line, do, do, you, do you think the, the Obama administration is a criminal enterprise? Uh, if I if I were still a prosecutor, uh, the flags would be going up and waving and the red lights would be going off. But where there's smoke, there's fire. All right. Thank you so much. Hopefully we can get you back in the next month as things heat up. Thank you, uh, Bob Barr.
Thanks, Alex. There goes the former congressman, soon to be another congressman again, in the 11th District, barcongress.com. We're on the march. The empire's on the Your run. Your calls are coming.